uh, from developer Hackjack Productions. Uh, you can find it on Steam for $9.99. It is early access, published by Tiny Build. It's a indie casual obstacle racing game. Uh, the game is about a father and a son riding the bicycles, bicycles through an obstacle course of death and other fun family experiences. Uh, what were your initial expectations going into Guts and Glory? Um, so my family, um, you know, to kind of go along with the weird setting that I've created for this podcast, my family um, <laughs> really did bond over a lot of death growing up. <laughs> so, so my expectation was that I was going to once again be able to feel that bonding experience from all of my relatives passing on in my youth. And so I was very excited. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I I looked at this game and I thought Goat Simulator. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I was just like, this is Goat Simulator, but with a man on a bicycle with his child. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily a bad thing, but I was expecting that kind of wonky, you know, attitude towards the game. Just sure. kind of running around um, and, and experiencing, like, more ridiculous situations. Um, so, yeah, that was my... That was my expectation. <laughs> what about you? Uh, I seen the video for this. God damn it! Um, <laughs> I seen the videos and the previews and trailer for this game, uh, and immediately I just thought it was like Tarantino on a bicycle. Like it's hyper violence. Things are getting cut off. Limbs are gonna go missing. Uh, and I was kind of excited. It usually takes us a few tries to go through and find what game we really we were really interested in to review on the pod. And I seen this one. It was the first one I looked at of the day, and immediately I was like, "This is it. Let's do this." So that mm -hmm. is where I was coming from. Uh, once you liked, uh, loaded it up, what were you liking about guts and glory? Okay, so I'm gonna. Oh, all right. I, I started <laughs> Hold on, this pace game yourself. up. Pace <laughs> yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I started it up, and the first obstacle course you go through, and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna give you guys some spoilers here. Oh, all right, you go through right. this obstacle course, and I'm just having a good old time. I'm biking, I'm having some, uh, I'm making some sharp turns. You know, <laughs> I, I'm feeling pretty good, and I get through the first obstacle course, which is basically just go in a straight line and 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 win. I'm like, I got this. This game is like, I can do Made this for you. game. Yep, I'm Finally. like, I went in a straight line. I won. Uh, nothing bad happened to me. I'm liking it. Um, a few obstacle courses in, I was just like, okay, you know, going. I was just going on the course. I made a sharp turn, going in a straight line, and all of a sudden, I was chopped in half because I'd apparently landed on an explosive device. <laughs> and I was just like, that's what's gonna happen to me in this game. And then it progressively gets more and more difficult. Um, so I will say, the first time I died, it scared me. Uh, I wasn't expecting it because it was a landmine, and I I got very nervous after that. Um, it wasn't that I was necessarily attached to my child or anything for that matter, but I just didn't want to die. Yeah. Um, and but the death was fun. Dude, the first time um, I realized what this game was gonna be, like playing it, like inside, is when there was a hook hanging down, like you're going into like the finish line. And it hooks your baby's head and just picks it up off your bike. And, and like you go through to the checkpoint and you win the level and you're like, oh, OK. So yeah. they don't they don't mind goring a fucking child in this game. Oh, yeah. These developers. No, if, if you lose your child, if your child dies, you can continue. Yes. Uh, if you die, you have to restart. But if, if you lose your child, <laughs> you have you still won, I guess. Yeah. He has no skills um, yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I guess the death was like, it, it was a fun element. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. And it's, you know, it contradicts the scenery that you're placed into. So. It's a very Pleasantville setting. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I think that's one of the main things I liked about the game is that they wanted hyper violence. They weren't afraid to go after it. And you play through it and you can have your legs or your arms like completely chopped off and you're just riding on the bicycle like a stump getting through the level like i just i love someone not caring that they're gonna offend or gross people out yeah you definitely um like you you can lose an arm and you'll just you'll just keep going with one arm like it's it's all about the race you know you gotta make it um one arm john i didn't i also liked the characters uh you unlock different characters as you go along there's there's the main character which is the dad on his bike and i think that that one's my favorite just because it's so 
pleasant. Um, you have Earl, who is a uh, like a redneck. He's kind of like a Earl, character. Um, you have the Yang family, which is driving like a little um, import <laughs> vehicle. Just like um, backhandedly there, racist. And then I, <laughs> yeah, and then there's this older guy. I think he's like a rocket scientist or something like that, and he's a little bit funky yeah. too. Um, so the characters I thought were fun. They they were unique enough. It was it was fun getting to the point where you where you achieved them. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed that. Um, I think the last thing I kind of really liked, besides it just being like an obstacle course game with bicycles, which is like always fun, um, is the community made maps and the level editor that are in the game right when you buy it. Um, so not only does that just open the game up to longevity. Um, it's really fun to go in there, mess around with the level editor, and then see how tragically you can murder your baby and yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the things that you were disliking? Well, well, wait, I really liked the music too. Did you? I thought the music. Dude, we do yeah. not go. We do not like groove on music. No, we don't. Because that's fine though. You can still get along, it, right? Right? Yeah. Right. Sure. It's cool. Okay. <laughs> How's Apple? You just go sit in the Appalachian Mountains and listen to your horrible music. <laughs> okay, so the music in this is cliche to me. It sounds like like an '80s like Home Alone type like feel. I don't know. You just it's like pleasant and just upbeat, and it feels like you're yeah like in night maybe a '90s like uh, PG or PG thirteen yeah. movie. You know, there's some like you're in that movie that has. And it, I don't feel like they do this a lot now because either we've grown as a society or or possibly we haven't grown as a society, but there's not a lot of nut Dude, Trump's in president. anymore. We're not growing yeah. as a society. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But there's not a lot of nut kicks in film anymore. And, right. you know, like in the 90s and 2000s, like every film had, like everybody got kicked in the nuts. And um, this, this, is a, this game has kick in the nut music. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. Okay. Yeah. That's your that's your jam, kicking the nut. Yeah, music. yeah, it was. But you didn't like the music. It sounds like no, no, no. Your nose. Yeah, let's go. Like going into the things we disliked, I thought the music was um, nut kicking music. It was pretty lame. Like I just I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, eh, okay. Here this is. Let's move on. Like it just it it, it didn't annoy me, but it definitely didn't add to the game for me. Um, a little bit forgettable for myself. I also didn't really like the controls on the keyboard. I know you can pick up an actual controller, but I couldn't find mine, so I was rocking a keyboard and for this game, and I just found it to be very unresponsive and very hard to turn and do flips and stuff. And for a game where that's what you're doing, um, ugh, not not too good, Hack Jack. Not not too great, my friends. Yeah, uh, I really did not like the graphics no. like the people the people were their faces were fun enough but you don't you know when you're when you're like seeing them and selecting them the imagery there was good but the actual obstacle courses are just so bad yeah i want them to be a little bit better i don't know you know i get that this game's like kind of hokey and and not taking itself too seriously but you know, like, I feel like they could have just gotten some better skins mm -hmm. for, like, some of these things. I don't know. It, it left a lot to be desired for me. Absolutely. And, and also, you know, you have these, like, kind of funky characters, which I like. But then the character interactions are just, like, the, the, you don't care about your kid at all. Which I guess maybe is good because then you, if you cared about your kid at all, it would be really <laughs> devastating every time it gets head gets hooked on or blown up. But... You know, there are, like, some sometimes random people standing around in these obstacle courses, and they don't cheer for you. They don't really do anything. Um, you know, I wanted just some more interaction. I wanted the dad to say, like, oh, shit, Billy, be careful. <laughs> you know, like, that would have yeah. fucking rocked if I was trying to save Billy and his head got hit. And I'm like, Billy, no. No, Billy. Like, that would have fucking made, made that a little bit better for me. Um so I, I felt like the, the interactions with the characters was lacking, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. I think that kind of ties into what my biggest dislike for the game is, is that the levels just don't necessarily feel enjoyable, and you don't feel a sense of accomplishment getting, th accomplishment getting through them. It's just mm -hmm. kind of like easy, turn here, dodge this, and then you're at the finish line. And I didn't go through one where I was like, man, that was really tough. Thank God I made it through. 
I'm an amazing gamer. I just kind of, um, I could zone out and get through all the levels. Okay, and that was, well, you know, don't brag or anything. Like, maybe some of us don't get through the levels as easily as you, Brian. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I don't want to, like, act like I'm the better gamer on this show. Uh, uh, you're not. Okay. I'm sure there are games like Age of Conan <laughs> or uh, Game of War, Clash of Clans, maybe, that you would dominate me in. But hand-eye coordination. Okay, dude, I saw you freaking play Tomb Raider. <laughs> dude, my Tomb Raider skills were fantastic. I saw you get stuck on that one goddamn part for like 35 hours. Okay, anyway. Um, uh, but I guess the last thing that I, I really didn't like is like, and I, let me clarify this for me. There is no single, or there's no uh, multiplayer option on this, right? Mm -mm, not that This saw. game would be fucking phenomenal yes for multiplayer yep yep it would be so fun to watch your friends children get <laughs> get murdered like seeing who could but, kill their kid faster yeah it would be so fun to be riding alongside on our bicycles with you brian yeah. and me just uh. nudge you into a landmine like sure. that's what i wanted out of this and it, it, it only had single player and i really feel like if it was multiplayer, like I would have really been enjoying it um, a lot more. It's not that it was not. It, it's not that it wasn't enjoyable. It just it just feels like more of a multiplayer game. Right. Uh, all right. Well, with that, let's go into our final thoughts. What are your final opinions on Guts and Glory? Um. So I wrote. I actually, as I was playing this, um, I had a thought that came to mind that kind of summarized it. Um, I really love GTA, and mm -hmm. I love racing in GTA. I love, like, you know, the co competitiveness there. And, like, the wonkiness of the characters, you know, all of that. And I felt like this was an indie version of GTA V with, with poor graphics and no friends. <laughs> okay. So, uh, <laughs> thumbs down? I am a thumbs down on this one. Um... You know, it is early access. They might add more content. Yeah. I think it's very close to being there. I do think that the fact that you can create, you know, like what you said, they they have the ability to, like, create uh, user-created obstacle courses and everything really adds a fun dynamic to it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I just, I'm not in love with this concept enough um, to, to really give it a thumbs up. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be thumbs down. Uh, I think I'm going to give it a unenthusiastic thumbs up. Uh, they, like, if you're going to pay $10 to see a ridiculous game, they deliver that. It's really funny to see the blood and gore and go through um, everyone losing their limbs when you're driving around with the car with the Asian family, seeing like the daughter and the wife being propelled from the car. Like It is funny at times with that. Um, it sounds so fucking I know. when we're talking like, about if, it. If you take like, this whole I love conversation, when that Asian family gets their fucking daughter, or their wife, like whatever. Yeah, you this know? is how people get in trouble with context. Is like talking about games like this. Like, <laughs> you're gonna be quoted later yes. on when you're running for like, you know, mayor of, yeah. your, of your city. Of San Francisco, you know, they'll love me there mm -hmm. with this. Uh -huh. um, so it's ten bucks. It's definitely. It feels like the game has a future. It, this is a game you'll probably go back to once there's more. User created content, developer created content. I think it's a, it's a justifiable purchase. Uh, I'm just not overwhelmingly uh, into it. So that is guts and glory from Half Jack Productions, published by Tiny Build. You can find it on Steam for 